Oh my gosh. And as I said that, it hit 5.30. So I'll just kick us off. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight for our second event in the New Year series, Self-Care Planning Workshop with CSU Extension. The series will continue every Tuesday evening in January. So next week, we have nutrition misinformation. And then the following week, we have a heart healthy cooking class. So we hope to see you at some of these events before the series concludes. We've also curated a list of resources on our virtual engagement webpage, and we hope you can check it out. As a reminder, you're on a webinar, you're muted, we can't see you. So if you're enjoying some dinner, cooking dinner right now, no worries at all. We're very glad you're here, but please use the chat box to communicate with us, ask any questions throughout the presentation. You can also utilize the Q&A as well. Uh, my colleague Dakota is here to help manage the chat. And so to start things off, we would love for you to put in the chat where you're tuning in from and what year you graduated from CSU if you are an alum. And if you'd like to click all panelists and attendees, then everyone can see your message, which is kind of nice. Or you can just send it to us panelists and we like that too. Uh, and many of our attendees tonight are CSU Alumni Association members. So thank you so much for your membership. It really does make an impact even beyond making events like this possible. So Dakota will include some more information about membership in the chat. And if you're a member, you may have already received your 2021 calendar where you can maybe use this to schedule some of your self-care days, but it's these really beautiful images of campus kind of in a watercolor style. So if you're not a member yet, you can join uh, tonight and we can send you one of these in the mail. So I hope that if you are a member, you've already gotten one. Uh, Dakota will also put in the chat my contact information and a link to our website where you'll find all sorts of resources and other upcoming events. And she's also going to include some upcoming CSU Extension health and well-being classes that our wonderful guest speaker Sue uh, teaches that are fantastic. So definitely check those out. Um, and really, that's all I have to say, because now I get to introduce you to tonight's speaker, Dr. Sue Schneider, who is a health and well-being agent in the Larimer County office of CSU Extension. She provides leadership, programming, and education in the areas of community health, family well-being, and healthy aging. Sue is a medical anthropologist and a certified integrated health coach. Sue, it's a pleasure to have you here for another event with us. Thanks for being here tonight. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is always fun. And uh, looking at where everybody is, my goodness, you're all over the country. That's so cool. You're in different time zones, but you can still tune in and we can hang out together for an hour and we can think about ourselves, caring for ourselves um, and how we can um, really, you know, prioritize our own self-care, which often gets lost and then we throw a pandemic in there um, and that makes it even more complicated. So, um, you know, kudos to you guys for joining and being willing to jump on into this topic. Um, this is a very interactive, uh, no, it's not an interactive, it's a self-interactive workshop um, because really what I'm gonna try to do is lead you into a process, a self-care planning process um, that will uh, hopefully take you on a journey of um, really discovering some things that are important to you that may have gotten lost, some things that you want to further explore after this class. This is really just a snippet of a whole process that I'm going to introduce you to, but um, Rachel was able to get you the tools that you need for this. If you have not printed out those handouts, it's great to have them in front of you. We're actually going to go through some of those, and it looks like Dakota just posted those worksheets there. Um, so if you want to take a minute and go ahead and print those out while I get started, or hopefully they're in front of you, and then you can use them afterwards as well. That's what they're designed for. So um, again, thank you. And I am with the Larimer County Office of CSU Extension. We have extension offices all over the state, really trying to address important and emerging needs. Um, one of those critical needs right now really is well-being. And as we all know, we've been hit pretty hard with this pandemic on so many different levels, whether it is the direct you know, loss and grief and fear and illness that we've all been dealing with, 
or kind of the more ambiguous losses, like uh, how do we cope with losing our freedom? You know, we've been, some of us have been working and homeschooling at the same time, or we are isolated and can't see family members. And so um, this has really been a challenging time and it's um, possible that your own self-care has slipped off the radar. Um, hopefully it hasn't, but I'm curious because so many of you did sign up for this class tonight. Um, what's going on out there? What, do you, what, what motivates you to be part of this self-care planning workshop? What do you need from this self-care planning workshop? You can just type it into the chat box. Just let us know a little bit about what's going on. What's happening with self-care for you? Are you doing a great job of it? Maybe you are. Maybe you've bought in, oh, okay. Maybe you've bought into this notion that self-care is selfish because that's kind of a current in our society. Yeah, we're hearing that we need to prioritize time to relax. I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. Yeah, it's, it's a high stress time. It's hit or miss for Anne. Sometimes she's on it, sometimes not. it's nonstop, it's doom scrolling. Oh my gosh, it's the internet. And then some of us are heading into new phases of life, retirement. We need general tips of prioritizing ourselves hoping that we'll go back to normal. And all of this craziness can help us rethink uh, what, how to take care of ourselves better, what our freedom really is for. Um, some of us are struggling with motivation. That's a really tough one. Job searches, a lot of things have changed over the last eight or 10 months, right? Um, and we just need reminders to spend a little time on ourselves. There are so many things that come up when we talk about self-care, feeling a bit stuck. Motivation is not as strong right now. Absolutely, you're not alone in that. Um, and really, uh, Kayla is mentioning how, how do I better plan or set aside time to actually do this self-care? We're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about feeling stuck. We're gonna talk about all of this stuff. It's not gonna solve all your problems, um, but hopefully it will give you a path forward and at least a few things to think about. And then yes, many of us are caring for ill relatives, it's hard to concentrate. Um, we do need to fill our, fill our own cups up first. So uh, I appreciate those comments. Those are pretty powerful. I have a sense people can relate to them. Um, and unfortunately, again, you know, the message that we receive in our society is that self-care is selfish, that we need to put others first. Us women in the group, which I have a sense there are many of us, this concept of selfless service. We just serve and serve and serve, right? Men, men get that message too as well. And really what this class is about is turning that around. I ask this question, is self-care selfish or is it self-full? We have all heard that saying, put our mothers, you know, women, wives, put your oxygen mask on first before you are really fully capable of helping others, right? And so we absolutely have to incorporate that idea into our lives. It's not just a concept, but really believing that taking care of ourselves is self-full. It is actually really, really important, especially during times of stress right now. So I don't know if many of you know, and maybe you do recognize this, but the majority of our physician visits, our visits to our health providers are related to stress. It's a, an alarmingly high percentage, 75 to 90% of our visits are related to stress. So, you know, these are emotional symptoms. These are physiological symptoms, might be actual conditions related to stress, heart disease, obesity, diabetes, depression, anxiety, but there are a lot of symptoms that don't have a, an easily diagnose, diagnosis, an easy diagnosis. Loss of appetite, gastrointestinal issues, aches and pains, chronic fatigue, insomnia, dizziness, muscle, muscle tension. Sometimes we just don't know what's wrong. And I like to make the argument in the classes I teach that, you know, we, we can't control a lot of the conditions that surround us, especially right now. 
But to some extent, we can control how we're reacting to them, how we're responding to them, and the choices that we make to proceed with our own well-being. What can we do to support ourselves? Really acknowledging that um, stress really, really hits us hard. I also want to reframe a little early on self-care. What exactly is self-care? Because we get these messages, go exercise, eat right, you know, lose the weight, get proper sleep, you know, all of this expert advice that's not often helpful when we're pretty overwhelmed. So um, while we're going to be looking at some of that in our own lives through this class, I also just want to put in front of you that self-care can be things like putting yourself first asking for what you need, boundaries, saying no, right? Giving yourself permission to let go, forgiveness, stepping back. A lot of self-compassion here. So maybe that first step with self-care is, how do I give myself a little grace here? What am I holding on to so hard, right? There's a lot to think about there. So a few of you mentioned planning. You need a plan. Well, guess what? Yogi Berra tells us, if you don't know where you're going, you'll end up someplace else. We do a lot of financial planning. Hopefully most of us go to do our annual visits. So we kind of do a little bit of medical planning. Now we do our marriage planning, our household, our family planning. Um, we don't do our self-care planning. We don't make a plan. We don't schedule in our calendars our self-care, right? And I, I mean, it's kind of a foreign concept and it's really important. So again, part of this process is kind of getting you on the path of really formalizing, what do I need to think about? What do I want to think about? And I would suggest bringing a mindfulness perspective in here is that we drop all judgments right now around what we're not doing right, what we should be doing, what we could be doing. It's not about that. What we're gonna talk about is our vision for our optimal health self, our values, what's important to us. And from there we go. We don't start from a place of deficits of what's wrong, what I have not done. It's a place of wise choices based upon what we can give ourselves. So that's what our planning is for. Couple of truths I just wanna put out there before we begin the planning part. We need to be proactive rather than reactive about our health and well-being. We don't want person ends up in the health provider's office with the hypertension or the obesity showing up as our symptom. We'd met rather it be some of the more benign symptoms, right? So highly encourage you to think about being proactive again without judgment. What can I do in advance, right? The other truth is our minds and bodies have the capacity for self-repair and balance if we're willing to listen and respond accordingly. So whatever's going on right now, our stress may be at a nine or a 10. Guess what? We actually have the capacity to balance that by just making a few shifts, bringing awareness to what's happening. So have faith about that. And the third point is that optimal health and well-being is a journey. It's not a destination. It's not an end point. It's kind of, it's what we do. It's a lifestyle. It's, it's how we approach our, our health and our happiness here. A few places to start. I've already kind of mentioned some of these, but one is we need to acknowledge the value of self-care, right? This is important. It can be important. Let others around us know this is important, taking time for myself is. Number two, we need to give ourselves permission for self-care. And if that is, I'm, I'm reading some chats and noticing the isolation, the pain of that um, is difficult and giving ourselves permission to grieve, to be with that, to open space for that, to talk about that, to acknowledge that, right? Or if the self-care is, um, you know, just getting outside and being in nature anymore, some more, and you're contending with all your responsibilities, giving yourself permission to do that is really important. The third point is evaluating our lifestyle. Um, there are a lot of really quick things we can recognize just by kind of taking a look around, like this is how I'm structuring my life. There might be a few shifts I can make. Hey, guess what? It's the new year. It's a good time to 
think about those things. Um, even what's in our house, um, how we organize our house, how we prepare our meals, um, how we organize our time, just evaluating. Again, no judging, but there are obviously starting points um, once we kind of take a look around and say, I, I kind of know I want to make a few shifts there. Then we develop a plan and that's what we're going to start doing today. Um, but a plan literally could mean using the worksheets that we have, putting the stuff on paper um, and checking in about it. And then the last point kind of builds on that, which is getting others to support and join us. So accountability, not in a bad way, but like telling your partner, telling your best friend, telling your mom or your son, hey, guess what? I want to do this. This is important to me. Can you just check in on me, you know, maybe every week? How's it going? Again, asking them to not judge, um, but just getting that support and, and even, hey, you want to join me in this. So there are some really fundamental things um, that we can do to get started on the path of just um, taking a little bit better care of ourselves. So the process, and I know I'm going a little bit quick. I wanna make sure we um, get through the part of the process um, tonight. Um, and feel free, I do have my eye on the chat, so feel free and, and Rachel or Dakota can chime in if a, a question comes in and you need to stop me, that's perfect, perfectly fine. But this is a model, um, this is from my training from Duke Integrative Medicine, um, and this is a pretty powerful self-care planning process because we're going to start with doing a little visioning exercise. We're going to really see uh, what that future self looks like who we really are, what we can step into. Um, we're gonna see how we can align that with our values. And then tonight we're gonna together do, or individually, but while we're in this class, do two assessments to take a look at where are we? And we're gonna set focus, set a couple of foci um, for moving forward. Um, the rest of the stuff in this wheel, the worksheet will take you through the rest of the process. So you have what you need to continue on, but those are kind of the four areas we're gonna look at tonight. And there's a whole set of theories behind this um, and stages of change that I won't get into. Um, but if anyone wants more information on this model, you can always reach out to me. All right, so I'm gonna take a breath. We can all take a breath now because this is the part that you can sit back and just let your core self do this work. This is all for you. So I'm gonna lead you through, it's about a five or six minute visioning guidance. And um, again, just give yourself permission to open up space and get really present with this. If you're comfortable, you can go ahead and close your eyes. And you can just settle into a comfortable position with both of your feet planted on the floor, even feeling like the roots of trees are situating deep into the earth, well planted, well supported. Notice the support of your seat in the chair. Notice your hands resting in your lap, just getting comfortable. And as you close your eyes, just begin to focus on your breath. Just notice the in-breath and the out-breath. Just slow and effortless breathing. Just letting yourself feel more and more relaxed just letting that tension settle. And just letting yourself sink into quiet and ease. Feeling those roots extending into the floor. Just feeling connected. Sensing what it's like to get present. So from this relaxed and comfortable place, imagine yourself walking into a natural setting and finding a path. 
Head to the path and begin to follow the path. As you're slowly walking along the path, just take some time to notice what's around you. What time of year is it? What season is it? What's the temperature of the air around you? Maybe noticing the colors, shapes or the textures of the objects around you. Maybe noticing the sounds along this path. Just being aware what's around you and with you along this path. So you'll notice now, as you walk along your path, that you're coming to a beautiful gate just in front of you. And next to the gate is a basket. When you reach the gate, feel free to leave anything in this basket that may not be serving you. Now unlatch the gate and step through the threshold into a place in time that's three to five years into your future. <coughs> this is where your future self lives. This place looks different from where you just came and yet it is somehow familiar. Continue walking along the path until you come to the dwelling of your future self. As you come closer, notice that your future self is waiting for you. Waiting to talk to you. Greeting your future self, notice how she or he greets you in return welcoming you to this time and place three to five years in the future. And notice what it feels like to be with him or her, this future self that lives a life of optimal health and well-being. Soaking in the environment around you, Noticing the colors and the textures and the temperature. As your future self invites you to a comfortable place for a conversation. Now is your opportunity to ask questions of your future self. Perhaps you may want to ask, what goals and actions will I need to set in order to live a life of optimal health? How can I take better care of myself? What supports do I need? You can ask your future self anything that feels right to you. Just take a moment and listen to the response. Before you leave, ask your future self one last question. What do I need to be most aware of to get me from where I am now to where you are?
So bringing this visit with your future self to a close, you might thank him or her for being here with you today, sharing their wisdom, finding your way back to the path, walking along until you come back to the gate. Take a deep breath and step through the opening in the gate to this time, to the environment where you began. Continue walking along this path. Now connecting with your footsteps and your breath. And I'll count from three to one. And at the count of one, you'll feel refreshed and alert, remembering everything you need of this inner journey. Three, coming back to the present time. Two, you might move your hands and your feet, move your body and feel the ground beneath you. And one, you can open your eyes, feeling refreshed and alert. So your visit with your future self. And I noticed the chat um, the last comment said, it's hard to get past future failures to do this. It's, it's hard to get past our failures in order to plan for the future. And I would say about this kind of visioning exercise, we've got to move out of our head. I hope some of you in your core found some information. Guess what? That was from yourself. Those are answers that are sitting there waiting for you to find so some questions that I would pose to you, and I would suggest taking just a minute, you have your self-care planning worksheet, little workbook here, writing down some notes before you forget. And if you are interested in sharing any tidbits in the chat box, that's great too, as people record some of the things they've learned. I have some questions up here that you can reflect on from that short journey. What did you learn from your future self? What did you leave in the basket? What did you leave behind? What did you identify that you need to drop? Or let go? What do you need to do? to move closer to your future self. What's a big thing you took away? Yeah, for some of you, the visioning is really hard. It's hard to see the future self and reconciling what to leave in the basket. And that's okay too. Just opening up a little bit of space to even pose the question is important. So somebody learned that consistency is the key. All goals reached little by little, yeah. And I have a feeling, Rachel, you're not alone in leaving fear and worry behind in the basket. That is, um, that's a big one. And it can be a really big barrier to any further steps in planning the goals. Yes, there is gonna be a recording of this. Yeah, and somebody left some weight in the basket. Absolutely, and maybe um, some judgment about the weight too, right? Nothing to leave in the basket. And my future self said, what took you so long? You're here, right? You're already here, right? Yeah, that's an interesting comment, right? Sometimes it's surprising that we already know. So there's another question for you. What is your potential if you change? What did your future self tell you about that? What can change if you're willing to think about what's next for you?
What will it free you up to become if you step into your future self? I'm seeing more happiness and joy. That's the potential, right? Yeah, that's a lot. We have a lot to gain. So just noting what you learned, just taking 30 more seconds to make your notes, recording. Ah, so somebody else left their fear of judgment. Yeah, in the basket, that's a big one. That's a big barrier that holds us back as well. <laughs> Dana's leaving men behind in the basket. You go, <laughs> you entered the gate alone. <laughs> that's great, right? It's so, it's, it's so individual for all of us. What do we need to let go of right now in order to flourish? That's, that's the question we're asking. So you can continue contemplating or recording from your future self, which is absolutely the starting point. What, what answers do we already know? Who are we in our core, right? Now the question is, what are our values? What's most important to us, right? And sometimes when we set these goals for changing, it's because like, we think the world wants us to be a certain way or it's because of expectations or it's because of things we we're raised with. Um, but this is different. What's important to you? What are the three things that are most important to you? So just take a minute, write those down on your worksheet. It's a really important question. What is most important to me? Okay. So We've got our vision, we've named our values. We're gonna do this first assessment, this wheel of life. Hopefully you have it in front of you. The directions are for each section of the wheel, circle the number that represents your current level of satisfaction. The higher the number, the more satisfied you are in that area. Again, this is not about judgment or where you think you should be. This is about how satisfied you are right now. Just be honest. Circle that number in each slice of this wheel. And then when you're done with, with circling in each slice, draw a line between those numbers from one number to the next. Just connecting the numbers, like connecting the dots. And take a minute to reflect on your wheel. There's a pretty good chance that it looks like a really bumpy wheel. There's a pretty good chance they're not all tens and that's good. I want you to keep in mind as you look at the numbers 
that not all of these things have to be top priorities for you. I will tell you right now, I just did this again. It's been a while since I've done it. My fun and enjoyment is pretty darn low right now. Um, that's hard to see. I'm not having a lot of fun, but it's like, you know, I'm kind of locked up. I'm, I'm, I'm living in my home, rarely going out and seeing people. This is a pandemic. So, you know, there are some things we really can't control. So just take a look at your wheel with that perspective. It is data. This is where I am right now, today. It's good data. You can learn something. You might want to take a note or two on your worksheet. What jumps out at you? What do you see? Okay, so taking another deep breath from that piece of information. We're gonna move on to assessment number two. So this is the Duke Integrative Medicine Wheel of Health. It looks really different. What we are going to assess now is our self-care. So in this wheel, the reason why I like this wheel is because Mindful awareness is in the middle of that. It's suggesting that it's the most important part of our self-care is to bring awareness to what's happening, right? So we actually know where we are. Are we in balance? What's in balance here? Um, I just want to point that out. And then on the outside of the wheel, and the blue rung is, is prevention and intervention. Um, you know, are we, you know, when we need medical care, are we getting it? Are we doing our prevention? So that's all important too. But what I wanna focus on for tonight with you are, are the, the, the components in the green part of the wheel. So these are self-care components, mind-body connection. And that means that's a tough one to explain. It's kind of like, you know, if it's important to us, are we doing the mindfulness and the yoga and just making sure we can bring awareness to our bodies and different kind of, and that might be through exercise for some of us. Um, the movement exercise and rest is kind of clumped together. When we assess, I'll show you in the next screen, you may want to separate those out. Nutrition's a piece of the self-care, personal and professional development, you might want to separate those out too. Um, how are you feeling in those domains? Our physical environment. This is an interesting thing. I um, always thought when I first went through the training that this would be kind of a non thing, uh, you know, who cares about the physical environment, but the truth is our physical environment hangs us up quite a bit, especially now that we're home um, so much, um, you know, there's a psychological impact of clutter or not having a space to be quiet or read or have a little downtime. Um, how we've organized our house. So it's kind of a big deal. So it's interesting to take a look at our physical environment, our relationships and communication, spirituality, if that is important to us. And it's certainly not to suggest all of these things are important to us. But moving on with the assessment, if we're going to look at the where we are, our current state in those domains of self-care, that's one thing. So 10 means we've nailed it, we're doing everything we need to do in, in, in that particular area. Then we go and rank our desired state. Where do we want to be? So with nutrition, I may be at a four, but my desired state may be at a six right now. It's not something I feel like I really wanna invest my time in. So that means even though it may be the lowest score, it may not be that important. And that's why we have this desired state column so we can look at what's important and then where we are. So take a moment and go ahead and rank yourself again, non-judgmentally, and you can separate things like um, the personal and professional development if you wanted to personal development and professional development and go ahead and do that ranking for yourself. Just take a quiet moment and do that ranking.
And then take a look. Again, what do you see? It might be interesting to you that you perhaps didn't recognize there's an area that you might have been pushing yourself on a little bit, but at the end of the day, it doesn't rank high as a desired state. Or there might be areas that you notice the ranking's actually higher for you than you would have thought. Or there's just obvious areas where the ranking's really low and the desired state's really high. And that's really good information. So again, just taking a note, what have you found? Adding it to your worksheet. Just noticing, what does this bring up for you? What does this tell you? Where you are. And from here, we have done a visioning process. We've named some values. We've done two assessments, our wheel of life, our wheel of health. This is time to kind of ask yourself, and this is because we don't jump into making changes all at once, but for you, what areas need the most attention? And that includes, it's important to you. It's not just a low score, but what needs the most attention right now? And the answer really could even be taking more time to actually do this evaluation, <laughs> right? Or just taking more time to be even aware of where I am because I couldn't really answer some of this right now. Or just taking, as I said, more time to open up space to just feeling icky. It doesn't have to be anything explicitly on these sheets. These are starting points. So what areas need the most attention? And a really important question is what areas are you ready to change? What, what are you ready to do? Because it may need a lot of attention and you're just like, I don't have the energy for this, or this is doing that in a pandemic doesn't make sense. So it's always balancing the need with the readiness. And that's what the wheel, I'll come back to the wheel shows us we need to do. So from that, this is where your worksheet's gonna come in handy because there's an area of focus number one and there's an area of focus number two. And so it's great if you can actually identify two areas that you need to work with. Because of the time frame of this class, we're not gonna work through the entire sheet that maybe you could save a half an hour after the class and keep working through this because the idea is that you keep working through this process. Sometimes when we work through this process, we find, ooh, my focus area was too big. I actually just need to take a little slice of that and then we start again and we walk down the process. So I'm just going to revisit this full process with you that what I was talking about in terms of what are you ready to change has to do with our readiness. So as we select our focus areas and say, I think these are the two things I want to start looking at that will take us down to action steps. We check ourselves, you know, at the door. What's my readiness here? How important is this? How ready am I? And only then we can begin that goal setting process, which is helpful to kind of set a long-term goal. And it's a little part of this visioning. Where do you wanna be in three months with this? It might be in three months, I just want to have a quiet space in my house where I can sit and read, do something creative. That's a great three month goal. It doesn't have to happen tomorrow. And then as we look further down the line, like, okay, I can envision myself having that space. And boy, this, I would really benefit from that. We step back a little bit and ask what barriers might get in the way of that? 
what could keep you from actually accomplishing the goal? If we think we can just step into a goal without looking at barriers, we're not very likely to be successful because if we haven't done it by now, there's a reason. So it's really important to examine those barriers. What are the steps we need to take to overcome those barriers? And this worksheet helps you work through that. And ultimately where we wanna get are two to three baby steps that you can take this week. So in my example of, you know, clearing out a space to be, to read, to sit, to be quiet, it might be letting my family know that's my intention. That's my first step. And maybe just spending some time, you know, picking up a few things that could move me towards that goal. Teeny tiny steps, because the reality is one of the biggest errors we make when we try to do some behavior change or add some good things into our lives is we take too big of steps. And what that does is it smashes any sense of confidence we have. And once we lose confidence, we're less likely to get back up and continue on that path. So teeny tiny steps are the only way to build confidence. Once we see, ah, yeah, I can do small things right now. I can fit that in and watch ourselves have success we can get where we want to go. So this includes working with difficult emotions. If that's what it is right now, um, you know, dealing with anger, dealing with frustration, dealing with anxiety, we can still work through this process. Where do I wanna be in three months? Maybe a little bit less reactive. What are the barriers that get in my way? And we can name some of those, baby steps. Take a breath, just try it once when I start to feel reactive. Whatever it is, I'm giving you some examples just to make sure it's clear like change can be slow and it's really positive when it is slow. So you have tools in front of you that can help you continue moving through this process. I just wanna spend a minute talking about working with obstacles. Really, we need to ask ourselves, how strong is our intrinsic motivation? When I was working as a health coach, the number one thing I would hear from first time folks who said, hey, I'm looking for a coach is uh, so-and-so, you know, told me I needed to lose weight, right? It, it's coming from the outside. Well, there is no way that we're gonna have success when it's shame and blame and guilt and you know external things coming at us. Change happens when it's important to us. And all of these things that you guys named that you put in your basket, you know, wanting to um, you know, be okay being alone, letting go of fear and anxiety, letting go of judgment. Well, what's motivating you on the inside to do that? What's your intent? What do you want? And hopefully you got a glimpse of that in the visioning exercise. So just checking in about your intrinsic motivation. If it's not strong, it's not a good time. Not yet, or some things need to be changed. The other question is, does ambivalence need to be resolved? And uh, this is the biggest challenge with, you know, folks that want to change their eating habits or lose weight because, um, you know, eating can be so comforting and, you know, we may not be eating as much socially right now, but social eating is such an important part of our lives and our culture. And so these are things we need to acknowledge and be aware of and work with and resolve our ambivalence before we say, yeah, that's really what I'm going to do is lose weight. It's important to take a look at the meaning behind what's so important about this. Um, and, and, but once we can address some of the ambivalence and, and understand, you know, the, I'm going to lose some things. There's going to be things to gain, but I'm going to lose some things. Only then can we free up that energy to move forward. Are our goals realistic? Um, again, you know, if we are not taking baby steps, then chances are they're, they're not realistic. I had a woman who came into my office one day and she's like, yeah, my next step is I'm going, she drank like five cans of Mountain Dew a day. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to get that down to one a day. And it's like, how do you, you know, how do you do that? So being really careful about setting realistic goals, um, you know, getting support and accountability structures in place, even if it is, I am going 
to take better care of myself by resting every single day, which means I'm going to step away from my computer for one hour. I am going to lie in bed. I'm going to read a book. I'm going to take a walk, whatever, like getting support and saying, Hey, partner, you know, friend, are you behind me on this? How can you support me with this really important stuff? And then are you willing to be patient with the slow process of change, right? We don't just switch like all of a sudden self-care is our priority. How about that? I have a boundary problem. And I came back to work after nearly falling apart before break. I was so exhausted um, and so burnt out. And um, I took two weeks off to try to like, woof, I just need to hit the reset button. I made the decision that I'm, I have to put firmer boundaries in place, um, you know, starting now. And yet I already back at work a couple of days, I can already feel it pushing back, pushing back. I have to be patient with this. This is so important. I don't wanna end up the same way I was in December. So I have to be patient with change, but I have to be committed to it as well. So yeah, right. So Jody's sharing, I've got an average of fives all the way around. Yep, mom, full-time teacher in a new state with my husband's job, stress eater, terrified of catching COVID. Guess what? You are not alone. Oh my gosh. You know, our numbers probably at this moment of time are gonna be lower than they have ever been. And that's okay. It's so important for you just to name that all of what's going on, noticing you're, you know, you're in a tough spot right now. And, you know, until some of this stuff frees up and these, you know, vaccinations start going and kids start going back to school for us moms who are trying to do it all at the same time and um, the fear of COVID, you know, until that goes away, there are circumstances we can't change. But what can we do? We can breathe. We can find time to step away from the worries. It may not, you know, we can step away from the work. That's one thing. We can also take time to step away from the worries. Like time out, I'm mom, I'm taking time to step away from the worries, right? We can get in contact with nature. We can open up to the fear, you know, instead of letting it eat us alive, we can open up to the fear. We, we're so afraid of it, but it has a lot to teach us. There are a lot of strategies we can use, but naming where we are is really important. So if you use these tools just to say, Ugh, I'm in a tough spot, that's okay too. But put a, you know, think about what, what are some areas you might, you might be willing to change that might be helpful. So yeah, thank you for sharing and being vulnerable. I just want to share this quote in closing, and um, this is really important. It's about listening. John Kabat-Zinn writes, what is required to participate more fully in our own health and well-being is simply to listen more carefully and to trust what we hear, to trust the messages from our own life, from our own body and mind and feelings, because we have a lot of answers. And sometimes we're so busy and so scared, we just don't listen. There are so many ways we can take care of ourselves. And if it's only to bring self-compassion, just a moment, hand on the heart, oh, this is tough, right? But we're all feeling this way. That's a great outcome of listening. Yeah, and Gloria writes in, we have a cultural belief that we're in control of a lot of things around us as parents. And the myth of control is, it's, it's a little dangerous because um, the myth, you know, control, the rug got pulled out from under us. When all of this COVID start, stuff started happening, we realized, hey, we don't really have control. The truth is we never really had control. It's just, it was easier to hold on to it and feel like we did when we, can control some of our circumstances. Um, so part of our task is letting go of the idea that we have control and, you know, being open to what's happening, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because it is all part of life, right? And in all of that, we can do things, we can resource by experiencing, expressing gratitude for what is, 
good in our lives, for what's happening, for the things that we can access, um, you know, the family, the lo loved ones, nature, um, the things that we still do have. Um, so just not to forget all of that. So that concludes uh, my presentation. I'm actually five minutes um, early. Um, you know, I have, there are a lot of resources Rachel has posted for you. Um, there is what I call mini classes. When COVID started, um, I got to work on getting some short classes on video um, that are around mindful self-care. There's one on healthy compassion. There's one on emotional resilience. You can access them anytime. Just reminders, things we all know. Um, I teach classes every single Thursday morning. I bring a group together for a morning of mindfulness. We spend an hour together and we cultivate presence and we connect. We do compassion practices and just get present and we connect. Um, that's available to you every single Thursday morning at nine. And then every month I do a different class. Um, last month, it was the self-care planning workshop for that's just open and free to the public. Um, and emotional resilience class is coming up. Um, I'm forgetting what else is coming up. Um, Tame your stress class is coming up. So a lot of good stuff. If you're interested in continuing this discussion, just continuing to have some self-care space um, that's always available through Larimer County Extension on Zoom so you can join from anywhere. So thank you. Awesome, thank you so much, Sue. I feel like we all just needed some time to take a collective deep breath. And I, I loved the visioning exercise as well. And thanks to everyone for being so open and vulnerable in the chat and just sharing where you're at. Um, I hope you all know that the Alumni Association is here for you, CSU Extension is here for you, and there's so many other amazing resources, so please know you're not alone, um, and let us know how we can be there for you. Sue, it was a pleasure, as always, to have you lead us in a wonderful class and workshop. I highly recommend all of Sue's other classes she was talking about. She has so many fantastic resources that are open to all of you, um, so definitely take advantage of those. Uh, any closing, any other closing thoughts, Sue? <laughs> no, I appreciate the gratitude there and just just your time. And I honestly, I, I just think this is the most important topic in the world right now. And giving ourselves grace and permission to take better care of ourselves is just so important. So Absolutely. I appreciate you all hanging in there. Use those tools. They're there for you. Come back to them and keep working through them. Absolutely. Well, Sue, thank you again. And to everyone who joined us tonight, thank you so much. Take care. Be well. Go Rams. Go Rams. <laughs> Take care. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thanks again.